So far, we have learnt about the transportation of materials in human body. Now, let us learn about the transportation of materials in animals and plants. In case of animal body, we have a vast transport system in order to supply essential nutrients and oxygen continuously to perform metabolic activities and a means of excretory substances. Let us learn how the materials transfer takes place in the plants. In previous classes, we have studied about Van Helmont's experiments on plants. According to his observations, plants acquire water from soil that contain minerals which are absorbed through their roots. This water absorbed by the roots and food prepared by leaves are supplied to the remaining parts of the plant by vascular bundles having xylem and phloem. In roots, the xylem tissue is located towards the center, while in stem it is arranged in bundles closer to the outer side. Now, let us learn in detail how the plants absorb water with minerals from the soil by performing an activity. From the root pressure activity, we have observed that due to root pressure, there is a push of water from below on the columns of water in the xylem vessels. We have done an activity in our lower classes that when a fig leaf is covered by a polythene cover, the inner parts of cover becomes moist. Now, let us learn where do these droplets of water or water vapor come from and how the water reaches top of the tree, say 120 meters height. The process of evaporation of water through leaves is called as transpiration. Water evaporates into the atmosphere through stomata of leaves and lenticels of stem. When the leaves discharge water vapor through stomata transpire, there is a pulling effect on the continuous columns of water in the xylem vessels. The top ends of xylem vessels are surrounded by the leaves mesophyll cells. The mesophyll cells contain a fluid. This fluid transports in xylem vessels, sap. Due to this, water is continuous from the xylem vessels to the walls of the mesophyll cells from which it evaporates into the air spaces causing the pull. Thus, the water column does not break because of its great tensile strength. This property of water can be demonstrated in the same manner as every time you drink through a straw. The image illustrates the water conducting system of a tree. By the process of osmosis, the water gets absorbed from the soil through the root hair and is passed into the xylem vessels which form a continuous system of tubes through root and stem into the leaves. From here, the water finally evaporates and passes into the atmosphere. The result is a continuous column of moving water from a transpiration stream. The amount of water passing through a plant is often considerable. Example, an oak tree can transpire as much as 900 liters of water per day. Therefore, the areas of forest where plenty of oak trees are present significantly affect the degree of saturation of the air about them, so that when air currents bring air which is already nearly saturated to a forest area, it becomes fully saturated and comes down as rain. This is the reason why forest areas often have higher rainfall than areas nearby. Now, let us study how transportation of mineral salts takes place in plants.